Alrighty, time for some more fun. Uh, so the statement reads, use the vector potential of a spherical shell to find a magnetic field inside a solid sphere of uniform charge density rho and radius r. That is, rotating at a constant angular velocity omega. Let's redraw this out. We found this uh, solution in the text as an example, by the way. So we just have the shell here that's rotating on an axis, and we have of uh, radius r. And uh, this is how we found a uh, potential to start. So we'll, we know that we'll have to modify some things. Uh, so what we should know is the vector potential, a, as a function of r theta phi, is equal to mu naught r omega uh, times sigma over 3 r sine theta phi hat for r less than the big R. And similarly, we have something compatible for uh, R greater than big R. Um, but in this case, we that was a shell, so we need to modify it for a sphere. So big R goes to little r bar, and sigma goes to rho dr bar. And uh, we'll see that we integrate to find it out. So here's how we found it, all nice and drawn up. Um, Again, that's just to help guide our intuition. All right, so applying these modifications, A is equal to mu naught omega rho over 3 times sine theta over r squared phi hat. And now we have to integrate in order to find actual density. So that would be uh, r, fourth, r bar to the fourth dr from 0 to r. Similarly, on the other part of the piecewise definition, we're from little r to big R contained in there. Um, that's only r bar dr. We integrate that out. Um, in the next step, we simply factor out a mu naught omega rho over 3 and a sine. And we see that the first integral yields uh, r to the fifth over 5. The second one yields r big R squared minus little r squared. Again, both in the phi hat direction. We factor out 1r and uh, simplify it through. So you see here that the first term is now uh, r squared because r squared divided by r to the fourth and then plus big R squared minus uh, little r squared over two. All we gotta do is find a common denominator. We do that and then we factor out a one half um, as you see with the new constants. And uh, yeah, that simplifies down pretty well. Further, we need to take the curl of this potential in order to show what the magnetic field is. So, you notice that we're in spherical coordinates. We need the spherical uh, curl, um, which come with some mag uh, multipliers like sine theta and uh, 1 over r sine theta, things of that nature. So, just be careful when you're applying this. Um, we simplify it through. We note that for the d theta partial derivative, sine theta times sine theta is the sine theta squared. So execute that, applying the chain rule. Uh, we get two sine theta cosine theta. And so the multiplier, one over r sine theta cancels with that. For the radial derivative, we have um, an r squared times the r's in the parentheses. So we I just distributed them and then reevaluated it. So you see in the first fraction, we have uh, two r there. And we also have uh, 4r cubed. Uh, but you notice that a factor of r cancels out with the 1 over r in front. So that, now we combine these and simplify them down. Um, in the next step before the box solution, we see that they both have a factor of 2 that can be drawn out. So we go ahead and uh, factor them out side of the r hat and theta hat components and cancel it with the 1 half out front of the brackets. And then it just simplifies down to something pretty manageable and pretty reflexive as far as the radius components are concerned. So pretty cool problem.